Issues with a vehicle's variable valve timing system can cause a variety of drivability issues with or without related system DTCs. Hi, I'm Dorman Training Center instructor Pete Meyer from Motor Age Magazine, and today I'll show you how the Autel Ultra S2 can help you make short work of VVT related problems. By adjusting the timing of intake and exhaust valve operation based on engine speed, load, and other conditions, VVT enhances power delivery and efficiency across a wide range of operating conditions. But when it doesn't work right, the engine can't breathe right and drivability is affected. I'm going to use the features of the Ultra S2 to see if the VVT is able to do what it's supposed to. Now the S2 isn't just a scan tool, it's a complete diagnostic platform. And with its help, I'm going to operate the cam phasers through their operating range. Use bi-directional controls, you say? That's a great idea, but not all vehicles offer this control, so let me show you another way to do it. I'll first run a full system scan to check all the systems on the vehicle. I get a complete code report from the global OBD2 side and the OE specific side for the ECM all in one shot. I'll review mature codes, pending codes, and permanent codes on the global side and see what shows up on the enhanced side. Codes or no codes, I want to verify if the system can operate the way it should. And to do that, I have to understand how the system works. With the Motor True Speed Service Information System integrated in the S2, the info I need is literally right in front of me. And before I waste any Diag time, I want to do a search for any related technical service bulletins. If there has been a component change or change to the software, I want to know that before I spend hours diagnosing something I'm never going to find. If there is a software update available, the VCMI that comes with the S2 is a J2534 pass-through device, and that will allow me to perform that reflash when attached to a Windows PC with the OE subscribed software. I could also take advantage of the remote expert option and be connected to an experienced programmer who already has what is needed to do the job and let him do it for me. I'll also spend some time reading up on how the system functions and if there are any codes stored, I'll want to understand them as well. Specifications for the system, if available, are also important. I want to know what the cam phasers at rest positions are and how much range of movement they should have. I'll look over the schematics for the engine management systems and identify the VBT solenoids, crankshaft position sensor, and the camshaft position sensors. Hey, this may sound like a lot of effort up front, but I promise you, the more time you spend understanding the problem and the systems involved, the less time you'll spend troubleshooting the problem. We'll go straight to the solenoids. By monitoring the relevant data pids and the scope patterns of the crank and cam sensors, we can check the phasers operation on most VBT equipped vehicles without the need for bi-directional controls. The S2 allows me to monitor the changes in both the data stream and in the scope pattern at the same time using the split screen function. Let's get that set up. I'll choose the camshaft sensor pids for the data side and I'll connect the scope to the sensors as well. I'll test one phaser at a time. Let's see what happens to the data and waveforms when I unplug this actuator. This cam phaser is now at rest. The actuators are duty cycled to accurately operate the phasers through their range. If I want to move the phaser to its max, all I have to do is provide power and ground to the solenoid. With power applied, the cam phaser should be at its maximum range of travel. The data tells me how far the phaser moved in terms of degrees, and if there's a specification, I can compare the two. I can also identify the timing mark on the crankshaft position sensor. I can use the scope's rulers to measure the camshaft position sensor relative to the CKP at the zero point and at the max point. That can also help me gauge how far it moved. Hey, granted, this is a brief overview of this testing method, and the S2 is capable of a whole lot more. If you want to see us dive more deeply into this topic, leave us a comment. 